The Air Intelligence Aircraft has the capability of providing the incident controller with an overview of the incident and all that information can be provided real time to the incident controller. There is a downlink capability with the aircraft that transmits whatever we see in the aircraft directly down to the ground to a base station so that the incident management team can see exactly what we're seeing in the aircraft. The benefit of it is to reduce time getting information or critical information to people on the front line. That can be either fire, it could be flood, it could be hazardous material incidents, it's broad but it pertains back to incidents that FISA personnel attend. There's probably three main bits of equipment on, on the aircraft. The first one is the cameras. There's an array of, of different cameras, which includes infrared cameras, colour TV cameras, a spotter scope, which gives us the ability to, to zoom in on small objects from a long distance away, and a laser range finder. The infrared camera consists of two cameras, a narrow vision and a wide vision infrared camera. The advantage of an infrared camera is its ability to be able to see through smoke. At that Boyer fire, the problem was that those houses under threat were under smoke. So the, the advantage of the air intel aircraft was we could look through that smoke with the infrared camera and see how close the heat signature of the fire was to those houses. That information was being live down to the ground so that the incident management team could see that and make decisions. As well as infrared vision, we can provide colour video vision, which is a normal CCD camera. The spotter scope allows us to zoom in to a small object at, at a, a distance away and stand back with the intelligence aircraft from two kilometres away. The laser is a great feature. It provides us with the ability to shoot the laser and place a mark on the map where we shoot it. So if we find a point of interest on the ground, whether it be the perimeter of a fire, an asset under threat, we can pinpoint it, shoot the laser, get that on the map, and then use that information. The other component of the system is the Avlex mapping processor. One of the difficulties with looking at our vision, whether it be infrared or colour vision, is determining where that vision is on the ground. We can coordinate that with the mapping system, split the screens, to be able to provide an image of where on the map we're looking at through the camera. We have a number of different maps we can use, whether it be a topographical map or a street smart map. That is of great use to users on the ground to find out where that, what they're looking at, where it is on, on the map. An incident such as Rockingham uh, was a good example of how we could provide an overview of the whole incident. I suppose it's a function of working from an aerial platform in that you could see uh, the whole path of the storm. So we could map the whole incident for them and they could cover the whole area rather than not knowing whether they've, they've found all the destruction or not. Key, key criteria into deployment of the air intelligence uh, platform, one is when assets are under risk. From the ground there's a picture, but there's an even better picture from the air, and this can provide the incident controller with much more valuable information uh, to assist him with his decision making and strategies. Uh, secondly is uh, remote areas, where there's limited access, for example floods, they need to know what's going on out in those areas. Uh, roads could be cut, bridges could be cut, etc, etc. So we can get up and give an overview of what's going on down there on the ground. And a third one will be incidents of significance, large incidents, it could be at fire, hazmat, could be even a, a large rescue. The ability to provide additional data to the ground for the people managing that incident is critical. The deployment of the air intelligence helicopter is by request. Generally it's an incident that's going or for example if it's storms that have been forecast we'll have a heads up on that and once the event has passed then the task will be for example to find the track of where the storm's path has been, um, plot that, pick up what damage has occurred and provide that information to the relevant incident controllers. If it's a fire 
It could be huge volumes of smoke, it could be in a difficult area uh, with limited access. So the decision makers at the, at the incident may need to know an overall picture of where they need to put their crews, what assets are at risk, and also the ability to see what's going on on the ground uh, if there's high volumes of smoke. This aircraft provides a huge amount of information. That information is channeled through the planning officer and ultimately at the disposal of the incident controller. The management of that information is at the discretion of the incident controller as he's the person who has requested our presence. The incident controller will know the information that he needs to put his strategies in place. By tasking the aerial platform to provide the information that he needs to complete his strategy enhances and improves the response to that incident. The incident controller will have control of that information and be directing what information he requires or tasking it to the crew in the air. When there's an initial request for the deployment of their intelligence helicopter, um, we're told what the needs are. So then the crew will plan uh, what information they need to gather when they get there. The aircraft is deployed with a pilot plus two FISA crew. Once we arrive at an incident, we'll do an initial appraisal, where the fire is, where it's going, what's in front of it. On board will be the portable downlink equipment. Once we get to an incident and have done our initial appreciation and mapping, we will land, we will deploy that portable equipment with a crew member, set it up as close as we can to the uh, incident control vehicle or wherever the IMT may be positioned. Once the crewman has set up the equipment, we set up a communications channel to the ground. Most of our communications goes to that channel, but we're flexible. We fit into the incident communications plan. We also have the ability to provide that information to the State Coordination Centre and Communications Centre. We're doing that by way of, of a link we have two links. One is to the, the portable downlink, which is deployed at the incident by the helicopter and the crew. And the other is the ability for the crew to switch their transmission across to a static receive site at the Belmont headquarters. That information then is received through fibre optic through to state headquarters. Also, information that has already been sent to the ground, to the incident controller, he can also request for the platform to replay that information and give, for example, State Coordination Centre an appreciation of a certain aspect of that incident. The aircraft has a radius of 200 kilometres uh, from Perth. It's, it's not limited to that. It's mainly kept in the metro area for the bushfire season because that's where the, the main threat is. At times outside the bushfire season, it's, it's available for use throughout the state. Last summer, the aircraft was deployed to Esperance, which is significantly out of the 200 kilometre radius of Perth. There was a storm down in the Esperance area, uh, widespread flooding, but it gave the emergency services down there the capability of uh, reconnaissance in the area. This aircraft has not only been used for agencies within FISA, but uh, also organisations outside FISA. An example of that is there was uh, quite a, a large bushfire throughout the summer up at Julemar. DEC uh, utilised the Air Intel assets to provide mapping and infrared vision of that fire. To enhance the existing air intelligence role here, which we now have available in West Australia, we are also upgrading the rescue helicopter. Uh, we are putting in the Avalex mapping system in there, which provides us with an additional backup resource which we can call on. There could be multiple incidents and we might require additional resources. We can place an operator in that helicopter and provide the same information. There also will be a downlink capability. So it's a combination of information. It's the, the correct information for the relevant needs at the incident, which makes the, the ground personnel 
role much easier and gives them more information to know what they're going into. Provides uh, real-time accurate information to the incident management team and that information can be used to speed up their decision-making process. Um, that's happened on a number of occasions over the last summer, which was the first summer that we used the Air Intel aircraft. And the feedback that we've had from most of the incident commanders that we've worked with have been very positive.